evangelist Anita Rivera and uh, I have a very important report to share with you and one that's very strange especially just starting off the new year and in light of all that's taking place around the world anyway here it is let's talk about it over the past week five Republican lawmakers have suddenly died this coming in from the most important news.com and uh, well, let's talk about it. Uh, have you noticed that quite a few prominent Republicans have been dropping dead lately is the question. At a time of the year when most people are at home celebrating the holidays with their families, you have Republican lawmakers that have been dying one after another. Of course, important people die all the time, but to have this many Republican, poli uh, excuse me, to have this many Republican politicians uh, die so closely to one another is definitely unusual. Uh, it is believed that 2021 is going to be a very strange year, and it has definitely gotten off to a very strange start. So as the days move forward, uh, let's watch and see if the pattern continues and more Republicans suddenly pass away. For now, these are the deaths that we know about so far. On January 1st, 2021, the death of Virginia State Senator Ben Chafin Jr. made headlines all over the, um, all over the country. Virginia State Senator Ben Chafin Jr. died after contracting the COVID-19. According to a statement from his office, he was 60 years old. State Senator Augustus Benton Ben Chafin Jr., a native son of Russell County, located in southwest Virginia, passed away on January 1st, 2021, from COVID-19 complications, according to the statement. Now, on January 2nd, 2021, Pennsylvania House Republican Caucus Chairman Mike Reese suddenly died from an apparent brain aneurysm. A state lawmaker, this is according to the report, who was elected to serve as the Pennsylvania House Republican Caucus Chairman in the 2021, excuse me, in the 2020, 2021 session has died, according to the House GOP leader this past Saturday. Representative Mike Reese, Republican Westmoreland, Somerset, died peacefully with his family by his side Saturday afternoon at Excella Health Westmoreland Hospital in Greensburg, following, they're saying, an apparent brain aneurysm. Representative Carrie Binninghoff, the majority leader, said in a statement also posted on Reese's official house website and his Facebook page. Reese was only 42 years old, and he was one of the most important members of the Pennsylvania General Assembly. Needless to say, a lot of pressure was being put on him from both sides because of the hotly contested election results in his state. And then, also on January 2nd, 2021, a former state representative in Connecticut suddenly passed away. His name, Dick Foley. He was a former state representative from Oxford who served as chairman of the Connecticut Republican Party and was an advisor to several governors and would-be governors. And he died this past Saturday as well at his home. Although he had health problems at times through the years, Foley's death at the age of 71 stunned his friends and colleagues in state politics. They did not expect it. That makes three deaths in just two days to start off 2021. Of, of course, there were some very noteworthy deaths at the end of 2020 as well, but we're talking about, in this case, these Republicans, again, simultaneously passing away. On December 29th, 2020, Congressman-elect Luke Ledwo of Louisiana also died. He died as a result of complications from COVID-19. And the following comes from NBCNews.com, and I quote, A congressman-elect from Louisiana died Tuesday evening from complications of COVID-19, days before he was set to be sworn into office. His spokesman announced he was only 41. Luke Ledwo, Letlow, excuse me, Republican, was elected to represent Louisiana's 5th Congressional District in a runoff this month. Now, Letlow was a strong supporter of President Trump and even appeared with him in a campaign video. On December 28th, a former state senator in Mississippi named Nolan Matadal died due to COVID-19. So that's the fifth one. Nolan Matadal, a longtime former state senator and representative and higher education leader at the Capitol, died Monday due to COVID-19. He was 75. Matadal, a Republican from Sardis, provided leadership for over two decades, they said, not only on policy, but also on personal character and statesmanship. This is according to Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman. He said this in a statement. Now, the question that's being asked, raised, posed, 
Is there any connection between these deaths? Some say I have no idea. Uh, the one who wrote the report, I should say. But there are many who are saying, I don't know, but it's, it sounds suspicious. Some will say that these deaths are an indication that the pandemic is worsening, but not all of the deaths above were attributed to COVID-19. Now, of course, considering how tense the political environment in this country is right now, some say that they think it is worth watching to see if more prominent Republicans suddenly drop dead in the days to come. Now, on January 6, 2021, vast crowds of protesters are expected in Washington, D.C. as Congress gathers to count the electoral votes. And you're going to have numerous Republicans in the House and the Senate that have already announced that they will be challenging those results in several of the most critical swing states. In anticipation of the protest, doors in the heart of Washington are being boarded up and lots of signs have been, post, have been posted warning protesters that firearms are even prohibited, which is quite stunning knowing that we have a Second Amendment U.S. Constitution to protect our rights to bear arms without it being infringed. Anyway, nobody is sure exactly how many protesters are going to show up, but at this point, authorities in D.C. are bracing for one of the biggest protest days in the history of the city. And needless to say, having so many Trump supporters in one area will be a magnet for all of the radical groups on the far left and on the most, uh, and, 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 and of course on, 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 um, on news outlets. Uh, and as was reported by this reporter, they documented numerous violent attacks against Trump supporters during the past protests. The day before the protest, voters in Georgia will go to the polls to determine which party ends up in the control of the U.S. Senate. Those results can heighten tensions even more, and the potential for lots of chaos is definitely there. This is the most divided our nation has been in modern American history, and for a very long time, uh, it's been, we've been warned that there is a, 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 a good chance, a tremendous chance of civil unrest to happen that could take place. And that could be in the here and now, that could be imminent. Now, of course, many on the left don't want to, you know, for, for, for people to get along. And, you know, you have the far left, you have the far right. That's why, you know, we really have to be, um, we have to be in Christ in the times that we're living in so that we don't get uh, led by politics. We don't, we don't get deceived by the political atmosphere that is happening in, in the nation in the times that we're living in. Because we're living in a time of great deception. And so, you know, as these both sides don't want anybody to get along, uh, we have both sides that hate each other. Again, we have a divided nation, and there's passion with that. And that is going to continue to be the case for the foreseeable future. The Bible says that a house divided cannot stand. A kingdom divided itself cannot stand. And we see that this nation's days, America's days, are surely numbered. And when our nation was founded, a single set of values and principles united us. And sadly, today we have completely abandoned those values and principles. Now our nation is filled with tremendous hatred and deeply hating one another is a recipe for a national die-off. Some may call it national suicide. So what do we do in light of this news? We, we, we know again that we are living in perilous times. And the days will grow darker. The Bible says that evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. My prayer, as I share with you these reports, is not so much to pick a side as much as it is for you to be uh, anchored and firmly grounded in the Word of God. Because being on the right, being on the left, doesn't make you in right standing with God. It doesn't make you... Uh, you know, um, in, in you know, saved. We know that there, are in in this political climate, again, is perilous, and we know that there's warfare taking place. But we can be wise and choose our battles wisely. We can fight the good fight of faith, and not fight and use our resources that are so valuable right now. The endurance that God has given us, the courage, the strength, the peace, which, uh, you know, the peace of God, which surpasses our understanding that guards our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. We don't want to waste 
those valuable resources that's priceless that Jesus paid with his own blood on foolish disputes. As a matter of fact, I'd like to read to you a portion of scripture to confirm what I'm saying because many right now are tossing away their testimony for the sake of fighting. They're tossing away their rest. They're neglecting their salvation for the sake of fighting, for the sake of a good debate, for the sake of choosing a side. This is not the time to do that. Again, we're living in the last days. Perilous times will come. These are the perilous times that was for, forewarned, that was prophesied in 2 Timothy chapter 3. But in 2 Timothy chapter 2, in verse 23, the word of God says the following, But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. Any servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the sneer of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Our position in the times that we're living in is not to serve a man as much as it is to stand in the promise of God, to stand in the word of God, to make sure that our mind is being renewed daily by the spirit of God when it comes to the things of God. That we have the mind of Christ. That our mind is not at war or at enmity with God. I know right now, you, you know, people say, I say right now, it's, about, it's been a long teaching, a long time teaching that people say, yeah, we don't want to, you know, the enemy's waging war against my mind. Is it? Is it really the enemy? Because my Bible says, and I'm sure if you have the same Bible, in the book of Romans, if your Bible contains the book of Romans, it says here in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, that to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So your, your, your mind warfare may not be the enemy at all. It may be your carnal mindset, because it has not been renewed with the word of God. You want to continue to dispute. You want to choose sides. You want to be on the far left. You want to be on the far right. You believe that your side is correct. You want to continue to worship a man. You want to continue to worship a woman. You want to continue to worship a leader. You want to continue to worship, you know, worship a person that, that's in a fallen state themselves, that needs salvation themselves. And, and, and you're going to go right to the pit with them. The, Jesus himself said, if, if the blind leads the blind, they're going to both fall into a ditch. And right now, this is what's happening. We, we are looking at massive crowds of people that are blind, that are being led by the blind. And they're going to fall in, in, in the ditch. And, and, and it's not God's will that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is subject, it, it, it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Why are you in the flesh when, you, when we are told that we must renew our mind by the word of God? We're told in Romans chapter um, 12, uh, verse 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We're giving the enemy all this attention. Well, it's the enemy is the enemy. Uh, is the enemy of just, just attacking me. No, it's not. It's your carnality. It's your sin nature. It's your unrenewed mind. And it's carnal and it's going to lead to death. And that is not, the, that's not, this is not the time to play patty cake with death. Death is waiting for you to come to the grave. Unrepentant. It's waiting, for, it's waiting to take you because it gets something out of this. It's spiritual warfare, folks, for a reason. But if the Bible tells us, listen, if you're in the flesh, you can't please God. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You could be on whatever side you want to be, the far right, the far left, a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, yada, yada. But if you're, if you're in the flesh, you're not pleasing God. But if you're not in the flesh... But in the spirit, and boy, oh boy, that, that's, that's becoming more, it's, it's becoming less and less in the times we're living in to find a true, genuine, spirit-filled believer in Christ. But we're told, if you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if you could just be in the spirit, then at least we know somebody's in. The kingdom of heaven is like, okay, we, well, we got her. We got him. We get, we, okay, okay you, oh, that's, I got this one. If you're not, it says here, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. If he dwells in you, you're in Christ and you're walking the narrow path. 
You're not walking on the broad path of destruction. You're not walking on that broad way. You're saved. You're sanctified. You may be going through a sanctification process. Receive it. You may be going through a consecration you know, process. Receive it. A lot of it, it's hard. I'm not going to lie to you. No sugarcoating God's process when it comes to sanctifying and consecrating. But it's worth it. It's, it's, it's going to reap reward that is going to blow your mind. That's going to fill you with such joy. And now he can use you to be a vessel in his hand to help others, to bring others out of the pit. But how can you do that if you're carnally minded? How can you do that if you're just looking to quarrel and debate, just like we read? You're not, you're not in the word of God anymore. You're into debating. You're into, you know, the political debate. Nothing wrong with engaging in politics, but even in the times we're living in, you got to be wise. And if it's seeking it to, 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 to uh, be uh, like a, um, what's it called, like a leech, if it's draining you, just like the news reporting on COVID-19 is draining emotionally, mentally, physically, wearing masks, también, emotionally, physically, mentally, just draining, 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 and seeking to sap your energy, seeking to sap your resources. These are foreign invaders, folks. It is a, a type of alien invasion happening right now in the spirit. And it's seeking to drain you of your resources. Don't let it. Be in the spirit of God. How do you be in the spirit of God before I, let the, you know, before I end the broadcast? This is how you are to be in the spirit of God. This is how you can be in the spirit of God. You must submit and surrender your entire life to Jesus. You got to cry out to God on your own. Stop looking to somebody else to lay hands on you to make you better with God. To deliver those devils that just keep on bothering you. I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, it ain't the devil. You're not that appealing to him. You haven't made it that far yet. He's waiting. I'm, I'll be honest with you. He's waiting. The Spirit of God is waiting. The Bible tells us in the book of Luke, or excuse me, in the Gospel of Luke, that the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan for 40 days. So Satan is waiting. His, his line is empty. He's like, okay, do we have any real ones? Because I, 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 got, I got stuff. I, I, I got training. Not, tra not training, testing. He's like, I got testing. There's not enough mature Christians in walking in the Spirit to even be tested by Satan, being led by the Holy Spirit to be tested so that they could come out in the fullness and Spirit of God, just like it says that happened to Jesus after the 40 days ended. The Bible says he came out in the power of God. Many people are showcasing a, a, a so-called power, but it's not the power of God. But you know your politics, you know what the news says, you know what Fox said and NBC says and, 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 and you know, MSNBC and ABCs and 123s and, and, and you, you know all that junk that has no eternal reward. It's not doing anything to renew your mind. It's definitely not doing anything in your spirit. You're sowing to the flesh and you're going to reap that of it, you're going to reap of it. You're going to see, okay, but you don't want to, you don't need to see if you just surrender your life to Jesus so that he can make you born again. Once you're born again, the Holy Spirit now does something. He does a miracle. He makes you in right standing with God. He makes you a new creation where old things pass away. All things become new. All things become of God now. Your sins are forgiven, which is major. It's no different. Right now, many, so, so many people are in debt. Hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars in debt. And if they knew in the times we were living in that they, that they could get their debt forgiven, no strings attached, they would, oh man, they're waiting for a $600 stimulus check right now. And yet God says, I have forgiven you of your sins. I've paid your debt in full. And many people are like, oh, no, I don't have time. I got to get into the politics. I got to get into the arena. I got to get into what the news says. I got to know what's going to happen. I got to be and, 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 you know, defend my, my leader, my, my person. I got to defend my party. Not if they're not, they're, they're not of the Lord. They're not subject to the law of God. Why are you, what are you doing? You're not in the spirit. You're dead. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Right now you need life. Stop letting the, stop letting the enemy of your soul drain you of your resources. Stop letting news and, 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 and the atmosphere of this world that is brought on by God, uh, excuse me, that is brought on by the God of this world, the lowercase g, God of this world, Satan. The Bible says that he is the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that works in the sons of disobedience. 
You're not a son of disobedience if you are in Christ. You're to be a child of the light, a child of God. And you are to be in the spirit of God. And you're not supposed to be dead. You're supposed to be alive. Alive from the grave. You're supposed to be walking your resurrection life, newness of life. Yes, you may be going through a process of refining. You may be going through a process. Man, I hope you are. I hope you're going through a process of discipline, chastisement, consecrating, something. Something. If you're going to say that the enemy's messing with me, there's no way he is. Because if he was, you wouldn't say nothing. I'll be honest with you. Oh, the devil's just at me. Are you sure? I can almost guarantee that's a carnal mind. I ain't casting any devil out I'm going to throw the Bible at you. I'll probably hit you over the head with it. I say that respectfully. I'm not going to hit you over the head, but I'm just making a point. You don't need to be delivered from a devil. You need to renew your mind. You need to get the carnal mind to be renewed and be put to death by the Spirit of God as you read the Scriptures. As you, as you beg God to give you the Holy Spirit, to baptize you in the Holy Spirit, to give you the teacher of all teachers. We have, you know, many women who are teachers. I, I'm a te I'm a Bible. I, I, happen, I, have, I happen to teach the Bible. I have an online school of ministry. But daggone it, there's no way I'll, I'll ever replace the Holy Spirit who is the teacher. And, and you need the teacher right now. You need to be taught. You need to be, in, you know, you, you need to have your spirit born again. You need to be dwelt in by the Spirit of God. You need to have sonship through the Spirit. Because we're living in the last days and it's going to get much more intense. It's going to get much more dangerous. Not because of COVID. It's because of the, the manipulative spirit that is leading this COVID. It's because of the rhetoric, the words of death. The Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. COVID is not killing people as much as the power of the tongue is. The belief system of man, the double-mindedness of man who's that's believing a lie. So now they're going to receive... The, you know, the lying, you know, serpent tongue that's being spoken, you know, that's being used by this man or by this woman on the, you know, on this platform to make me believe a lie. I don't think so. Not when your mind is renewed. Not when you're born again. Not when the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. You better, you better stop. You better stop. Folks, this is so serious. The times that we're living in is so serious what I'm telling you is so serious the news isn't going to tell you what I'm telling you you have to do your own duty here you have a call the call what's my call in life do I do I get to preach or I get to sing do I get to wear a dress and, and ballet and tiptoe no your call is to surrender your call is that you surrender to God and then and then you die and then and then he, he makes you born again. I want to say die, you're not gonna die for real, but actually you do die for real. You're you're still alive in your body, but something happens. You 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 are the the the, the enemy of your soul. That the, there's a death that takes place that makes you born again. A miracle of God happens, and now you're raised to life like Jesus was, and you and you see everything new. You see sin for what it is for the first time. And you see holiness for what it is for the first time. You see, the, you see evil for what it is for the first time. And then you see God for who he is for the first time. And everything is changed. Everything is truth. Everything is the way it ought to be. You see truth for what it is. And you see a lie for what it is. And there's no exchange. There's no falling back. This is the way. Jesus is the way. As long as the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. And you need, you need life. Stop calling on people to lay hands on you. So you you want to go? Uh, listen, people go to these conferences and, and people. And men, I'm not interested. I respect a lot of them. That's fine. But some of them kind of, to me, it's just kind of like, uh, come on. Why aren't you telling the people the truth? That's my position. I'll look. I'm checking out a lot of these so-called leaders in the church. I'm like, these people are not telling them the truth. They want you to rely on them. They want you to continue to, to visit them because they become your God. I'm not interested. This is my God right here. The word of God is my God. The spirit of God is my God. Jesus Christ is my God. The father, the creator of heaven and earth is my God. No man or woman on this planet. <laughs> None of them fills those shoes. None of them are my God. Jesus Christ is Lord. And he loves me. And he saves me. And he loves you. And he saves you. And he's calling you now to break free from dependency on, of TV and man-made media and rhetoric. And even the so-called leaders in the church. And for you to be saved. And for you to now run to him so that he can lead you in all things. He loves you very much. 
Jesus is Lord. Folks, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the Word of God, breaking world news headlines, matching Bible prophecy. Learn more about my ministry and listen. Celebrate. Come on. First Fruits Offering 2021 started. Uh, this uh, it, it marks, uh, I, I got to double check, but I believe it marks the fifth or sixth year that we're doing the First Fruits Offering as being directed by the Lord to do. And so the First Fruits Offering is, is very holy. Uh, it, it's, it's, it, it started on January 1st, 2021. And it ends January 31st, 2021. And the word of the Lord for this first fruits for the new year is whatever the Father sees you do in secret, he will reward you openly. Uh, and, and that is a promise. That, that, that's, that's hope. That's a gift. So you want to definitely be part of the first fruits 2021 with our ministry, Emo Off Church and Open Your Eyes People. Visit my website. Learn more. It's very easy. Um, and God is good. www.openyoureyespeople.com www.openyoureyespeople.com My mailing address is uh, P.O. Box 218. Shirts, Texas 78154. Until the next broadcast, my friends, may you all be richly blessed and please heed the word of the Lord that was spoken to you in this broadcast. God bless you all. Bye-bye.